Alright guys, what is going on? How you guys doing tonight? Welcome in, welcome in. Um, hopefully everybody is having an awesome evening. Oh, I need a light on. Hold on. Bam, there we go. Get that green screen working a little bit better. Alright, how's everybody's night going? We uh, just, just now got some... Uh, Hopefully my levels are okay. If you guys are having trouble hearing me, if stuff is too loud, too soft, let me know. I'll make those changes. Um, <clears throat> hopefully uh, you guys are having a great night. Um, probably saw earlier today we had um, some floor rules drop, and I thought that, uh, you know, maybe as we were kind of going into tonight talking about the Naboo Starfighter, we could just do a really high-level uh, talk over um, all of the floor rules. So... Hope everybody is doing good, and uh, we can kind of maybe get started on that a little bit. So I'm just gonna start by uh, sharing my screen, and we're just gonna go. We're just gonna get right into it. Um, let's see. All right. So, fantasy flight games floor rules. Gonna make this like super super big so let's see get rid of that okay so you can find these on the fantasy flight games website um, we have I'm also gonna bring up my my chat here just on the off chance that you guys want to say something while we're while we're working on this if you go up to the x-wing um, if you go up to the x-wing uh, page here on fantasy flight games you go down to tournament resources you will find the fantasy flight games floor rules released today okay so um i'm not gonna go over this whole document um i'm guessing that dion and all sorts of people are gonna be talking about this um but i do play in a lot of tournaments so i thought i figured that it might be good to just kind of quickly go over some of the things that I kind of uh, notice about the floor rules. I'm not going to make any sort of judgments whether something's good or bad or whatever. We're just going to kind of um, chat about things that maybe you should see. So they talk about the difference between casual and competitive. So casual tier, low key, competitive tier, high key, pretty, pretty standard for what we see. Um, they talk about a judge. Um, basically a judge does all the things that we expect a judge to do right and then there's a head judge and the head judge decision is final so basically none of that has changed from kind of what our ideas are of the game um, there are however 1.2 penalty definitions so there are now definitions for what can happen when something bad occurs there are warnings game losses match losses and disqualification so warnings warnings there are now penalty points guys okay so in big tournaments everybody now has a set of penalty points essentially you can go to seven okay or five sorry five seven at a casual event so you can get a normal warning a hard warning or a severe warning right so if you get a normal warning basically if you cause some gameplay disruption, you, um, so like this would be not for X-Wing, but a simple error on your deck list, but I mean a simple error on your ship list or unintentional slow play, you can get a warning for one point, right? So now unintentional slow play is a thing, right? If a judge decides that you are slow playing, they can just give you a normal warning and say play faster for a penalty point. Hard warning. So if you cause um, some sort of heated argument, if you're if you're really like yelling at your other opponent, or you have a really heated argument, or you are, you know, cursing at a judge or whatever, you can get a hard warning for two penalty points. Okay, and then a severe warning is when you do something that is, you know, like aggressive towards your behavior. You're, you know, you tell them that you're going to meet them outside and you're going to fight him or whatever. Right? Severe warning such as that. Um, you know, you know, might not get kicked out of an event because, you know, maybe things are just super hot, but you can get a severe warning worth four penalty points. 
What that means is that is that you do anything else bad during that entire event, you can get DQ'd, right? If you acquire more than five at a competitive event, you're DQ'd, okay? So keep an eye on that, guys. Um, I'm not sure how much this is gonna play into X-Wing. Um, Final Fantasy, or Fantasy Flight um, kind of put this out for all of their uh, structures. So just keep an eye, uh, so just know that this is now a thing, right? So, you know, what can you kind of get? Um, game loss and match loss. So it matches all the games played between the same pair group of players in a given round. So this doesn't apply to X-Wing. Game loss and match loss for X-Wing are the same thing. Um, disqualification. So if you receive five or more penalty points, you're DQ'd, drop from the event. You lose your game, you're dropped from the event. Um, so be aware that that is a thing. Um, and then your name is then reported to FFG. Okay. Uh, gameplay disruption. So what exactly does that look like? Um, so, you know, you can have regular disruptions. You can be cheating. Yeah. Hey, Dion. Yeah, we're just going over this really quick. I'm sure you're going to go over this on Tuesday when we go over this. But, you know, uh, like I said, we uh, we talk about this uh, pretty regularly. Um, if you want, Dion, do you want to do you want to come on and talk to us really quick? We can talk it out. We can jump on the Discord right now, and I can bring that up, uh, and we can do some audio for you. If you wanna, if you wanna chat through this, I know you go to a bunch of events too, and we can just kind of like spend ten minutes just chatting about it. I can. Uh... All right, let me uh, let me bring up. Uh, let me let me swap back over here. Let me bring up uh, the Discord. see if I can remember what my password is um, if you just want to jump on to um, um, if you want to jump into the, uh, the the voice chat for um, for the paint cast Um, sorry, I'm logging into my Discord right now. go all right let's uh i'm hopping into the all right let's turn off this uh music here paint cast thursday yeah how you doing peace how you doing all right we're giving uh we're giving dion a second um and we're gonna talk about that other things that we're doing tonight. We got the Naboo Starfighter, man. This is a pretty, pretty ship. All right, let me turn you up here. All right, go again. Check, check. All right, I can, uh, oh. I can hear you. Let me, uh, See if we can hear. Let me change my my audio settings on on this mixer here. Make sure that uh, Luke, I can hear you, but I'm not sure that we can uh, that um, everybody else can hear you. Let's see. Oh, I think I think we're good. All right, Dion, start talking a little bit, and then uh, and see if any everybody can. Uh... You can hear him. Twitch can't hear. Zombie Flash can hear you, but Twitch can't hear you. Check, 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 check. Oh yeah, yeah, you're good. I can see you on the desktop audio. You're good. Okay, so how you doing, Dion? Welcome in.
Sorry, Dion. I was uh There it is. Hi. I had my I had my mic muted on the uh on Discord. Aha. Welcome in, welcome in. Good to see ya. Good to see you too, man. All right, so I figured it would be a, a really good uh, um, a good start tonight since, um, I mean, the only thing that I, I do well in X-Wing is attend tournaments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that okay. maybe we okay. could, I would just figure that we would uh, uh, quickly, I would quickly go over all the, uh, all the floor rules tonight. So um, it's been, I mean, years coming, right? Yeah, definitely. This is something that FFG has been talking about for a while players have been clamoring for it and um you know we have it we know of people who who've been saying that it's been around the corner and you know it's finally it's finally here right um so one of the things that we kind of so let's just i'll just go back up to the top and we'll just kind of quickly uh go through some of this stuff so most of this stuff is pretty is pretty much the same that we've already looked at we have um casual tier competitive tier right um mm -hmm. and that's nothing really new for us, right? We know that we have high level events and low level events and they're kind of treated differently. Um, judges, all, pretty much the whole judges thing is about the same. They pretty much took this word for word for what X-Wing typically is. Um, yeah, when when things really start getting interesting is when uh, you, you were already pointing it out, like the points system. Right, right. Is uh, is where things you know, I I understand them developing some type of way in order to track, which I think is great. But you, man, I I can't help but to think in the negative a little bit and say, man, there's that guy who's going to be looking at at his account balance. We'll put it that way. <laughs> like, hmm, I wonder. Um, I mean, hope I'm hoping that mo most people are not going to do this, but um, but it's good again that they have some way to formally track it, which we need right it's better it's better to have something even though it's not perfect than nothing so yeah so i honestly i don't see this being utilized in x-wing often um okay i i think that i mean i think that most events that players go to this is not going to be a thing you go to your hyperspace tournament and i'm guessing that most of the time because Everybody knows each other. Our, most people know each other at these like semi-regional events. X-Wing is a pretty tight-knit community, even though we have a lot of people playing it. Um, I don't see Agreed. judges going up and saying, "Saying, hey, you're uh, you're kind of you're kind of getting hot here. I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a point, right? I, I, right? I see them. I see that being something that they do when there's nothing else that they can do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I see this being threatened." way more often than it being implemented oh definitely i mean you you, you have we have a stick now <laughs> right exactly before, right before we had enough all right and i also don't see i mean i'm trying to think of events that i've been to in the last two years where a severe warning is it would be something that someone would implement I mean, there has been multiple times, right, where where FFG would have done this at like Adepticon two years ago, right, where we had the where we had Damn. the Miranda Mir match, right? Yep. FFG would have that would have definitely been a point where they would have said, okay, severe warning to both of you, figure it out, play the game, right? Get get, get that loop and chewy off the table. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I mean, at at any sort of regional hyperspace um, event, I can't. I can't ever think of a time where a severe warning would be warranted or where it would have ever been implemented can you yeah I, no i can i can definitely see that because a lot of the regional stuff you're playing you're essentially playing with your play group plus some local ish people uh for a lot of that stuff a lot of the things that this, a lot of places where this is going to be implemented is like you said at the premiere events where you start start mingling in people that are, are traveling from other states uh, you know, on planes and things like that. Worlds, right? It's gonna be uh, that kind of, kind of, kind of environment. And Gen Con, right? Next week. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Gen Con's gonna be the first one, and this is something I'm gonna kind of keep keep track of. I want to see how often these are being, uh, you know, being given. I'm gonna talk to the judges and just kind of get a feel for how much this was used. Um, I think most likely because 
Gen Con is the first big event after it happening, players are maybe going to be a little bit more careful than usual to start. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that I think that there's going to be a lot of talk and people fired up about this way more than this is going to be implemented, especially at the beginning. Yeah, um, I can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, so we're going to, that's going to be like kind of a part, uh, it seems like that's an integral part of the document. So we're going to keep coming back to that. I think as we, as we continue on, so it talks about game loss and match loss. And I said that for X-Wing, this is, there's no difference between the two, uh, match loss yeah. refers to other games that FFG does. Um, so disqualification, I mean, this is the first time that we truly have seen any rules from FFG about being removed from an event. Um, historically, um, especially in X-Wing, being removed from an event is almost an impossibility. You have to be really awful to be disqualified from an event. Correct. I mean, we have confirmed confirmed cases of people, you know, blatantly cheating and have not been removed from an event. Right. So... So the fact that it hasn't happened before. Yeah, the fact that there's an ability for that to happen now is is pretty interesting and it's pretty good. Um, so it says only the head judge and the TO have the authority to disqualify a player. Probably a good thing. Um, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then after issuing a disqualification, the leader must report it to FFG, which is which is an interesting note. And I'm not sure, especially at the local level, how often that is going to actually be utilized. I don't think it will be almost at all, but I, I'm I'm glad that that part is in there because it's it, it needs to be known. Like, hey, this player went so far as to get DQ'd. It's it needs to be documented at a higher level. That way, we can track a possible uh, pattern from a player. If they're getting DQ'd, you know, across the nation. Let's say they're going to you know premier events across the U.S. and uh, and and there's no communication with all those games, with all those different events, all of a sudden we, we don't have information. But now if we're starting to see a pattern, then we know like, hey, listen, you're on the watch list already, or hey, you, may, you might not even be allowed to play anymore. Right. Um, number two, um, gameplay disruptions is kind of, is pretty interesting. Um, basically, I feel like they took this directly from X-Wing. Um, we pretty much have three things that we can do in X-Wing when, when the game state is broken in some sort of way. Either we can say, well, that's the world now. We're just going to continue on. We can say, nope, we're not going to we're not going to go back, but we are going to fix the problem now. So um, and then, OK, this is big enough that we actually have to put all the ships back to where they were and and re go back. Um, and it seems like that that's pretty much up to the discretion of the head judge um, and about yeah. how they want you to do it. And I mean. Again, I don't want to go in too much into this because we already do this in X-Wing now. This shouldn't be anything that is new for people on the tournaments on the tournament scene. Absolutely. And there are small moments when we're playing that this happens all the time, especially the uh, resolve now. So f for instance, um, force it, like, regening the force is a mandatory trigger. You 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 started flipping dials. Oh, I forgot to flip my force. I'll just go ahead and flip it. Like it it literally there's you don't no, need a judge for that, right? right? It's just go. You, you've you've, you've self-regulated there a little bit, right? And there's no reason to play on, right? There's no right, exactly. and, there, and there's no reason to rewind. Like, okay, go back, put your do, take your weight, take back <laughs> your one straight, so I can flip over my force, right? Yep. Um, exactly. Yeah, and so then it says that if you don't know what you're, if you don't know what your, uh, if something goes wrong, call a judge and they'll help you figure it out and. There's a bigger thing here. The three types of gameplay disruptions are missed, abil missed mandatory abilities, missed game steps, and illegal game states. It says that um, if this only happens once, then the player receives a normal warning. So this means that if you forget, in theory, I don't think this will ever be played this way in X-Wing, but if you forget to flip your force over, and someone calls a and, judge and, on you. And the you, judge is called for it, yeah. You can receive a normal warning for missing your mandatory ability. That's a point. Right? I mean, so I'm calling on those people that are on this stream right now that are going to potentially watch this later. Come on, guys. Let's continue our tradition of being good sports within the X-Wing community. And please don't abuse that. Okay? Correct. People forget stuff all the time. 
you need to be you need to understand that you're gonna forget stuff at some point and that this is not for you to game the system this is to make sure that when there's an unresolvable situation that we can actually fix it yeah right so absolutely um, <clears throat> So then it says, um, so then it talks about mismandatory abilities. And then it says, if the player commits the same gameplay related infraction more than once, a larger penalty may be warranted. Yeah. So then those are, those are where you, you have a, you have a guy maybe who's, um, not dealing his damage cards all the time, like the, the correct number. Right. Or you have situations where, um, they continue to miss the force and it could be causing issues in the game. You're like, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be at two or three force. Right. You know, right. if, if you've missed it multiple turns, that's maybe where, you know, you might have to understand why your opponent might call a judge on you. and might give you that single point infraction there. Uh, j just so that you can, you, you got to make sure that you're playing right as well. Like you said, mistakes do happen. And 95% of the time, it's super casual. We're having a great time. You right. said uh, the community is great. We're having a, a, a we're here to have fun and have a good attitude. Uh, but let's let's keep it clean. Right. Um, and this is and remember, guys, this is not a document that FFG made for X Wing. This is a document that FFG made for all of its competitive games. So I think that although this applies to uh, obviously this applies to X Wing, I think that some of these very very hard rules are probably not warranted towards our group and our game so Tar yeah i agree i mean yeah you're right with with this type of document where they're trying to put everything in a circle they have they either have to choose to be extremely vague or or more pointed with maybe i mean a, a missed mandatory trigger in a card game could be way more of a big deal than forgetting to flip a force token or a charge right right exactly right yeah um, and this says, um, and it says that, you know, we have missed game steps, right? Which is, you know, you're not, you didn't do a thing. And then there's the illegal game state. And we all know what illegal game states are, right? So something happens and you're like, man, you shouldn't have been able to barrel roll or you shouldn't have been able to do that hard too because it was a, you had a damage card that said that your hard turns are red maneuvers and you have a stress, right? But you're past mm -hmm. that point. You're too past that point. So now you're in a legal game state. We've all been there. It's going to happen again. So apparently you can get um, in trouble for that. And I think that's what comes into the repeated gameplay disruptions and hard warnings. So if you eventually get to the point where you um, where you uh, continually miss your damage cards and forget that, that, you know, that can be an eventual penalty for you. So um, I think all of us are going to start needing to have a concerted effort to play tighter. Yep, agreed. And one thing uh, I've already started doing here, I'm, I'm working on a little document for some content in the next couple days, is basically trying to translate this document and try to make it as X-Wing specific as possible. Just kind of pointing out like, what are the mistakes and which ones fit in, into each of these categories? Because I think some people are one, wondering like, well, what does, what does flipping your opponent's dial you know where, where does that fall into and just kind of tr trying to figure out what what is what here right. because like we said it's vague it's big it's open it's encompassing their, all their games right so tarhan said there's a note later that makes token flipping not an immediate warning you basically get one oops um and then uh and so that's good um so you don't immediately get a warning for for missing a what is probably a trivial a trivial uh, a trivial event thing um, mm -hmm. And then Killer Aardvark um, on chat says, uh, who is uh, Chris Brown? Um, obviously, he's uh, very knowledgeable in the judging circuit. He, uh, you know, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Chris Brown has been multiple times world judge, Adepticon head judge multiple times. He pretty much knows his stuff. So um, he says that happens actually fairly frequently. If you mess up a miss trigger that a judge needs to get called, you'll frequently get a warning. Most of the time, it's just an exclamation point to get your head back in the game. <laughs> yes, yeah, Shazbot, yep. Chris Brown the Rapper. Chris Brown the Rapper is frequently a judge in X-Wing. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so it says that, so basically if, uh, um, if you have an event disruption, um, you, can, you can get in trouble, so like if you're causing problems you can get in trouble so 
you probably should avoid that. Um, tardiness and absences. I've never been at an X-Wing event where someone was still playing in the game and was significantly late or didn't have some sort of, uh, or didn't have some sort of like somebody else say, oh yeah, he'll be here. He just ran to the, to the restroom really quick. That's, that's never been a thing in X-Wing that I've experienced. Have you experienced that? No, no. And I know there's a couple people who messaged me and were concerned like, well, what, what happens to you if like, um, like you're at a system open and you're, you're looking for, for a match and they start the time early. And like all of those premier events that I go to, I communicate very clearly with the judges. And a lot of times there is a little bit of uh, deal making there where, where I've talked to the judges and they understand like, hey, you guys might need plus two minutes just because of, you know, needed extra time to walk from one side of a convention hall to another or something like that. Right, right. And so it says generally a player is tardy if they are between one to ten minutes late for miniature games. So yeah, we got a lot, lot of stuff to carry. There's right. You got to be careful walking around. Right, I get it. And again, guys, you know, be be um, be aware that that you know, again, X Wing as a whole, I've never experienced tardiness you, as a problem. So don't go making tardiness a problem. In there. <laughs> yeah, well, something else I want to throw in there, and it's really dependent on the event that you're going to. I've been to tournaments where. You know, there's 15 minutes in between each round, and I have been to tournaments where it's like five minutes, and like everybody's late to the table, right? Like right. they're they're just worried about making sure to keep their their schedule, versus making sure everybody's ready. And that's at least they give a 10 minute window. It's like, hey, everybody's late. Everybody gets a warning. Right. Uh, I'm obviously I'm just joking there, but for sure. something to think about. Yeah, and I mean, and you know, like like uh, Worlds last year. Worlds last year, all those tables are really close together. And sometimes if you have to go from literally one end of the event hall to the other end of the event hall, and you have to go to the bathroom because you're going to explode, and, you know, like you maybe need to get a drink of water because you're going to pass out, you know, that, that can add up. So, um, yep. and, need, and need to look at the pairings board, right? Because well, that happens well. too. You got to find that paper. Right, um, and and because this is the paint cast, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it. Um, Killer Aardvark says, "What's the warning system if FFG Tome is late with pairings?" Oh, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> That's not content you're gonna get on the Gold Squadron podcast, guys. Um, I think I think that uh, you know that FFG should get a warning, and after they get five points, we have to switch over to Cryodex, right? Im immediately, immediately switch over to Cryodex. Um, <laughs> you got to export the JSON. Oh wait, you can't. There's no export option. So it also says at competitive events, a player must take care to arrive at the correct seat and play against the correct opponent. If a player sits at the wrong table and plays against the wrong opponent, this counts as being tardy for their scheduled match. So that's pretty funny. Um, however, so make sure you're playing against the right person guys again this doesn't happen in x-wing this happens probably in other games card games probably more likely so uh, just be just be aware of that yeah and the the other way that this can happen is sometimes table numbers are, are kind of weird depending on if the table numbers have been knocked around or if they're doing like the serpentine numbering or just like the straight numbering just like double check like hey are you? Bob? Yes. Okay, great. It's you and me, Bob. Right. Um, for you, Dion, this does say for events that have a streaming table, the streaming table is treated the same as any other table regarding tardiness and absence. So yeah, they, they have to, they have to put that in there. Right. For sure. Right. <laughs> are you gonna? Are you planning on? Uh, are you planning on um, enforcing FFG's policy, calling the judge when uh, when people are uh, tardy or absent, and getting match points for uh, for your oh, events? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Why not? Let me definitely have the community turn against me and <laughs> all my streams. That sounds like a great idea. No, nah, no, nah, absolutely not. Like it's keep it casual. We're here to have fun. So, uh, so, so, Killer Aardvark says at Worlds we had two games next to each other where player A didn't show up for his game and player B accidentally played against player A's game. It was crazy. Yeah. So I mean, this stuff happens, <laughs> and I think at that point, I mean, you just have to you have to be flexible with uh, with you know. You know disqualifying people for accidents right if we're all here to have fun we can't we can't just start being like all right 
you have three points left. Straighten up. <laughs> right? We can't do that. Um, right. It says errors with dex forces list possible game loss or disqualification. So it says this deals with competitive events. Deck squad, army, and fleet lists are used by judges. Um, in between rounds, a judge may check a player's deck force to see if it matches their list. If an error or illegality is found before the beginning of the round, such as a deck having less than the legal number of cards, etc., um, a judge should explain the error to the player and ask them to fix it before the round begins. If the error is discovered before the first round of the tournament, the player may fix it without penalty. If the error is discovered between rounds, however, then the player receives a penalty in addition to having to fix their, their list. If a judge thinks this error may have been committed intentionally, the judge should investigate for cheating. So, um, so go this ahead. Is, this is really important. I'm glad that they put this in here because this is more common a mistake Honestly, it's usually an honest mistake, uh, but this is more of a mistake than people think. Um, it's just really important to make sure that everybody's, you know, you don't, you don't have anybody at 201, and especially with the variable points that we have now, that if, you know, you might have a guy who does it all manual, right? And he he didn't carry a number or didn't use a calculator. Like, it it happens. It's, it's important to make sure that, that you're fine. Uh, check your points. And honestly... I know of several players um, in the past who, thinking it as, as a joke, like, oh, I'm going to turn in an illegal list to see if the judges are checking. I will tell you now, this is, it's not super cute anymore when you get, when you get handed a game loss because you thought you were funny turning in a, right. an, illegal, an illegal or, uh, or completely BS list. So, there is, so the penalties issued are harsh. So yes. both the deck and list are legal, but do not match each other. So even if you have a legal list, if you didn't submit the exact same list, and so that would mean cards on specific pilots. So if you mix up EPTs, whatever, right? And it says, um, it's the resolution is fix it, right? But if it's in between rounds or during a round, you get a game loss and that's it. So, I mean, yep. like, you lost your next round because you made a minor mistake. So, be advised, be careful. Um, and it says the deck list is illegal, but the deck itself is legal. Correct it, same thing. Your, what you turned in is legal, but, you, but what you brought is illegal. So, same thing. And then both is illegal. And then if both of them are illegal, right? If you're at 201 points and you turned in a 201 point list, and you brought a 201 point list dq so be advised yeah. that's a i mean these are harsh harsh penalties um and they have to be right yeah absolutely like it's this is the the trust part of the game is that we're both playing on an even playing field we have a 200 point limit where there are things you can and cannot have on a list and when you started a tournament you know if if it turns out while you're playing a, an event that you should have put squad leader on a different pilot like hey that's too bad you got to play with the one that you brought and right. then you know better better luck next time right and and for those of you that are playing a game and you guys are looking at each other's turned in sheets if you print out your sheet prior to the beginning of the game and you hand it to your opponent if you see them accidentally put their cards mismatched don't call the judge for this this isn't something no. that just have them switch the cards. Be be a regular person. Uh, <laughs> I like how you say that, Luke. Just be a person. <laughs> I mean, we can't. I, we, we. I mean, if there is a the reason why X Wing is fun is because we are a good community. If we if we take if we want to penalize players because they're playing a game and we're playing all day, we're playing six rounds and it's the sixth round, and you want to penalize a player just so you can get the win, that's not cool, man. Like, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. the bad guy. They aren't the bad guy for, for making a mistake. You're the bad guy for, for making them take a game loss because they made a mistake. So mm -hmm. just, be, just be advised out there that, um, you know, if you're thinking about what I really want to – I think it would be really easy to game tournaments so that you have an advantage based on the floor rules. Don't do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because right. you can use any rules as a weapon. Right. That's that's the ba that's the bad side right. of 
very hard and fast rules when you have it so concrete. It's like, oh, hey, looks like I I realized you you accidentally made this mistake. I'm going to call you on it, and it's advantageous to me. These uh, these are uh, killer hardback. These are harsh penalties from Americans, and I assume I'm not allowed to flippantly DQ people anymore. Actual quote from an Australian judge. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Oh, uh, um, well, I mean, if you're out over in, uh, I know that uh, there's a couple of our viewers that are in New, New Zealand and uh, the Australia area. So uh, I guess, guys, you get a reprieve. <laughs> yeah, there you so, go. that's a good thing. <laughs> Easy, uh, baby. Right. It says marked cards, normal warning. Um, we don't have marked cards in X-Wing. There's nothing that like, there's nothing. Like deck maybe, but I mean, that's, <sighs> but like if you see if you have a marked card in your damage deck that means that you're trying to avoid that card so that means not only is it marked but you're also like trying to see where it is and like shuffle it during a certain part of a game or something right i've, I've never i've never had this happen i've never not seen me, this happen i've never heard of this happening so i'm just going to assume that it doesn't happen no nah, it's right. it's it's a super it's like a one percent thing right. it's super right. small maybe even less than that this is definitely more for the card games right um, drawing extra cards, right? Um, I think that drawing extra cards, even though it doesn't explicitly say it, it does. Uh, it does probably. Uh, it's the opposite is probably ju true for X Wing. Not drawing enough cards, right? Draw your cards mm -hmm. for your damage deck. Um, hey, Phil Sebto. Hey, Acorn. Hey, Emperor Duck. Glad you're here. Um, good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome into the stream. Um, right now, we're just kind of going over um, the uh, new tournament rate or the new floor rules. Um, after we finish the floor rules, we're going to be uh, getting into the N1 Starfighter. So uh, glad you guys are here, and uh, um, we're going to be done with this. I don't know. We're all about two thirds of the way through, so it won't be too terribly long. Um, and uh, um, so, but you guys, we're we're here. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about some stuff, and then two uh, Monday we'll finish stuff up, and you know maybe on Thursday uh, there might be Gen Con action. So, oh, the uh, Gen Con, right? Yes. Okay. Um, we're drawing. So drawing extra cards. All right. Here are some big ones, and those of you in chat, I want your opinions on this because uh, because we actually have a thing for slow play. Slow play in X Wing is unbelievably hard to define and unbel and unbelievably hard to enforce um yep. so um when is the paint cast i was here for the paint um right after we finish this um i mean i think this is important for x-wing and or for gold squadron in general so we're just going to finish this acorn and then we'll we'll uh we'll get right to the paint promise um so slow play he, he, he's mixing some bottles right now guys right 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 um get, get them ready <laughs> um slow play so um even at casual events players are expected to play at a place that will not set their opponent at a disadvantage because of the time limit um there can be a very fine line between slow play which is unintentional and stalling which is a form of cheating so we have a clear distinction between slow play is you're messing with your opponent's time and stalling which is you're intentionally messing with your opponent's time so yep. players should openly communicate if they believe their opponent is playing too slowly oftentimes a simple i need you to play more quickly from the judge is all that's needed to remedy the situation if a player continues to play slowly even being asked after being asked to speed up the judge should issue a normal warning and remember normal warning is what two points two Again, points two points out of five guys five that's all you get <laughs> repeated offenses even after receiving warnings so you can get multiple nor normal warnings what i'm reading is you can get multiple normal warnings for slow play but it can also warrant a game loss so you can have multiple points taken off of your day and a game loss for not playing fast or not playing as fast as the judge believes you should be playing so this is an yeah, important it's, go ahead yeah so one of the one of the things that gets thrown around a lot is because a lot of people want to know like well how much time do i have um, a lot of the premier event judges look at about 30 seconds per decision now there's a lot of decisions to be made next wing so that that time can add up 
quite a bit. The other thing it's important for people to understand is that every game ebbs and flows, right? Uh, there's that like that turn right before the initial engagement is the longest turn in the game, and both players usually will will take a lot longer on their dials than any other turn. And you'll see, you'll you have that moment where you look up at your your opponent and you're like, yeah, this is the turn. Right. You're kind of looking at the board, like I need to see this other thing. And that one will take longer, like it ebbs and flows, uh, for sure. There's there's the the moments where this starts getting into question is if a um, you know you have a a player with a ship that's worth more than the other player and there's like 15 minutes left on the clock and all of a sudden you notice that their pace is slowed because of course they want the time to run out so that they don't have to run away anymore right you know th and, things of that sort yeah right um, and you have to remember and you have to remember that this that that lists matter for slow play too right if you bring oh, yeah. two ships in your list i don't think there is a i mean uh, any judge at any event can disagree with what i'm saying but i don't think there is any expectation that you need to be playing super fast for your two ship list when someone else can bring seven ships and this just and, and be able to i mean because moving seven ships planning seven ship sets of dials and you know can be very very time consuming um mm -hmm. and so saying that for someone with a two ship list for multiple times during the game to take a lot of time to set their dials and really think about where they're going um i mean i think this is going to still be a very very sticky situation yeah, it's still it's still going to be a hot topic, and I'm what I'm hoping in the in a perfect world, X Wing competitive X Wing players are going to see this and say, okay, I, my overall I'm just going to try to pick up my pace of play, and it's fine. Right. But I'm I am very curious, especially with all the premier events I'm going to be going to over the next six seven weeks. Um, you know, how are people going to be reacting to it? Are I want to kind of keep track and see how many people are getting called on it, talk to players about pace while I'm out there and really get a feel for how players are going to approach us now. Right. And remember, and the, the bottom part of this is really important for judges. So if a judge believes that a player is intentionally stalling to take advantage of the time limit, then this is a form of cheating, right? And cheating yep. is, is like almost, DQ. it's just a DQ, right? And potentially yep. a report to FFG. So yep. we got to be aware of like, like, so if, it, so, if you're playing slow, that does not mean you're stalling, right? If you're playing slow unintentionally, right. a judge can say you have a warning and then move on, right? If you're if if a judge says, "You know what? You are taking advantage of the clock in order to make sure your opponent can't win," right? That is potentially mm -hmm. cheating and can get you kicked out of the event. So, make sure just with every every single rules update, right? Just with every single tournament you go to, if you have questions about what you need to do in order to succeed at a tournament, talk to the judge before the tournament starts. If you have questions about how a card is interpreted, talk to the judge before the tournament starts. If you have questions about, hey, you know, is running, is, is running from my opponent and taking 30, exactly 30 seconds to set my dial when I know I'm going to do a five straight, is, is, that, is that stalling, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be yep. just <laughs> check. And I'll be honest, like <laughs> if you ask that question to the judge before the the tournament, they're going to be watching you. <laughs> right. But I mean, but but it's a, but I mean if if that is part of your strategy because that is yeah. I mean in these in in X-Wing now, when you have a two ship list, running is a strategy and you have to and you yes. have to incorporate that as a strategy. And sometimes part of that strategy is we can't go another another 10 rounds. We can only go 7 rounds for me to win. Yep. Right? And so you have to and so you have to expand out. You have to say, "All right, this is I'm going to I'm going to take the most amount of reasonable time that I can in order to get to the point where I can actually win this game." And so, you know, talk to the judge. Make sure make sure you know who your judges are and whether or not this is going to be an issue for them, right? Mhm. Yep. Very important for everything. Um, unsporting conduct. So if you get, if you're kind of like me and you get reasonably salty during games, you need to keep your head, right? 
Yeah. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, if it's one thing to be upset right during a game, it's another thing to start actively um, being aggressive towards your opponent. If you start being exactly. if you start being mean towards your opponent, if you start using inappropriate language towards your opponent, um, ex- and a whole bunch of other stuff that I've never seen in X Wing. Mm-hmm. Um, then... Yeah, the most the most like emotional outburst I've seen is somebody at their table, you know, ex- exclaiming something like, "Oh darn!" when something goes bad. Like it's, it's usually dice related, you know. But it's I I have never seen somebody use you know profanity towards another player, you know that that I've never seen. Right. So inappropriate behavior that falls under the minor unsporting conduct. I'm gonna go through all of these and see which ones I've done. Right, and and remember, remember, guys, I, I I do get salty because I'm competitive, right? I don't get salty because I I dislike any of you. I, I I love literally all of you guys in the community, and that's part of the reason why I'm here, right? But a player uses vulgar or profane language or makes profane or offensive gestures towards another person, um, not towards anybody that I don't know, but definitely towards right. people that There's I do. Jo- know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like you know what? I love you. Screw yourself. <laughs> right, exactly, right? A player inappropriately demands that a judge issue a penalty to their opponent. Okay, guys, if, if remember, this is a key thing. If you are going to... If you think that an opponent is doing something wrong, call a judge and tell them to fix it, not that they need to apply a penalty to the opponent, right? So, um, a player... Yeah, exactly, in- yeah. The judge is not, is not your weapon. Right, exactly. Um, a player insults another person, be they another player, a spectator, or tournament leader. Okay? Insults. That is a, a pretty wide margin, and it is usually, in, in professional settings, it's usually up to the person getting insulted to decide if they feel insulted. So, exactly. So, so, I mean, I've definitely done that. Um, you, know, expect, you know, even if you say, like, you know, like, man... You, I can't even believe how hot your dice are, man. You are so lucky. I, I'm if, offended. Right, exactly. I'm offended. This is all skill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, people are people in chat are uh, are telling me uh, that are are making fun of me for calling uh, for saying that I'm I get salty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, a player falls, uh, fails to follow the instructions of a judge, head judge, or tournament organizer. Yeah, I mean you need to do what they say, and that's just it. Um, I've never, I've actually never done that. Um, a player leaves excessive trash at the table after getting up and leaving. Oh my um, God. I hate this. I've seen so many players do that. I'm so glad it's in the rules. Not like, oh, yay. Right. I'm glad it's in here. I didn't notice it was in here. Right. This makes me happy. A player stomps around, throws their deck onto the ground or performs other frustrated outbursts after losing a game. So Throwing their dice on the roof, stuff like that. It's taken me a long time to learn my strategy for when I have excessive emotional feelings towards the end of a game. And what my strategy is that's tended to work for me, and maybe it'll work for you if you have the same problems that I do, is you tell your opponent, good game. I'm feeling very upset at how I played or how the game match went. Um, I'd love to talk about it with you some more, but I need a couple minutes to cool down. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's that's all you need to say. And then and then at that point, you are reasonably you are reasonably allowed to go walk outside and then do whatever you need to do. Just leave the play area, leave the leave the event for a second, deal with your frustration and anger, and then come take a deep breath, come back in, and then play your next game. So, um, a player celebrates a victory loudly and excessively beyond what could be deemed appropriate or is rude and condescending towards the person they defeated. I'll tell um, you, I had somebody do this to me. I had somebody do this to me at an event, and it, oh, it, oh, I got so mad. Right. I got, oh, I got so mad. I mean, I mean, at what point is, is just being loud beyond what can be deemed appropriate a problem? <laughs> <laughs> Zach Matthews. Zach All right, Matthews, continue. I'm talking to you. <clears throat> no, <laughs> I'm just joking, buddy. I love you. Um, um, the person attending an event is wearing offensive clothing or has offensive images on their game material, such as a playmat. The player must remove or cover up the offensive imagery or risk an upgrade to their penalty. So, 
That means anything that is racist, sexist, or discriminatory, graphically violent or gory, sexually subjective or explicit material, strong language, swear words, slurs, etc. I think okay. this this right here, they specifically they're they're calling out like play mats, like card players they carry around like a like a two by it's like a two by one little square where they play out play out their cards. And I've seen some pretty crazy stuff on there. <laughs> so Shazbot says, can we enforce the trash rule at league night? Please. <laughs> like, and you know what? Like last night, Kayla left, left stuff out. Yeah, I'm calling you out, Kayla. Uh, there was somebody else who had <laughs> left two bottles of water. I know Kayla because I saw her little bubble tea sitting on the, the table. So Killer Aardvark says, uh, a quote, um, what are you going to do with the rest of your day since you're going to lose? Heard a player say that to another, uh, to their opponent at Adepticon. Jeez. Uh, Come on, guys. All right. So, yeah. So, we can't have that. And I think oh, that... Oh, man. I know who that was. <laughs> I, think that, I think that generally that is... It happens in X-Wing, right? We love the game. We get we get really emotional. And, uh, guys, you know, it's it's all about policing each other, keeping it, keeping ourselves in check. And, again, you know, don't use these rules in order to try and game your way into the cut that's not that's not what these yes. are for you know make sure these are for making sure that people who are actively not feeling comfortable and not having fun because of another player has some sort of reasonable expectation to to get that resolved yep that's what these and are and for. another thing i'm glad this is in here because i know this is going to maybe sound a little like like inter internet ag preachy but like there's there's there are people who don't understand like what are acceptable social protocol absolutely with interacting with people because they they might be used to one thing you know this by having this here it's like hey this this, this these are the lines and you might you and your guys at at league night might be calling each other whatever and saying doing all the crazy things right but we're all here in a tournament together official all right. gotta abide to these rules yep and then don't harass people right um i think if that ever yeah. happened in x-wing that that there would be a very very big um there would be a pretty big uproar i don't see this happening in x-wing but don't do it guys like like treat other people with respect and um that's what makes our community good because typically we don't have in x-wing we don't have that kind of problem so no so i think i, I think we can just skip over that one but that brings us to maybe the biggest thing in in high level tournaments right now mm. is the bribery and collusion. Um, there is yeah. there is a lot that goes. I mean, in high level games, especially when you're near the cut, when you're winning and you're near the cut, this stuff happens all the time, and you need to be very, very, very careful about what you're doing now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. This this is a this is a whole two hour podcast episode and like this one subject we can have a whole discussion on it. But yeah, it's right. Basically, if you, when you break it down, is if you talk about it, you're you're breaking the rules. Right. If you're having any type of discussion, you're you're breaking the rules. What it's not clear on, and I'll be honest, what it's not clear on is what if you've had the conversation before the tournament. Right. What if it's an understanding among your playgroup? Like it's oh, this it's is hard. a tough one. Yeah, it's hard. So I mean, so there, the, there. We'll go through the the three examples and the top thing. Concession in and of itself is not collusion. So if you decide for real that you want to concede, that's not collusion. You didn't do anything wrong. You are allowed to stop playing the game if you want to stop playing the game. But that means that you get a game loss. And that's just the way it is. So if you want to stop and you want to concede, you're, you're welcome to concede. But if someone says, hey, we're both going to get dice for, or, or, or do you want to split dice for, um, the, for this tournament, right? For this game. Whoever wins, you just want to split the dice. And, and the other person says, well, if you want to split the dice, I'll just concede. That's bribe. That that is not okay. You can't do that. Two players realize right, that right. they right. Yeah. So you can't be like, hey, um, if you concede, um, I'll give you the dice. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you can't will, do that. 
that actually makes you lose the game and and then and then the other player and the, the other player wins so be aware that you can't that prize future prizes are not up for are not up for discussion right exactly and i would say that the one the one exception is if in in the case like so for instance like the two years ago at adepticon they were doing like winner gets these shield tokens it was like 10 shield tokens or something right. like that a lot of players were like hey split no matter what yeah right. and that was the end of the discussion right if and, you start to barter past that that's when you get into the sticky territory right and and we do that um ohio regionals um i remember that happened um with i did that with marcel i said yeah. i said i said hey marcel no matter what on this game, do you want to split dice, right? Neither Marcel or I are ever going to concede to each other. Like that's just not going to happen. We're playing no. literally for keeps. But yes, but you know, saying hey, do you want to split the dice? I don't think that's co that's not collusion, right? Uh, Killer Ardvark says he split dice with uh, with Mark Groberg at Ohio, uh, or with Mark Moriarty at Ohio, right? So regardless of outcome, if you are saying we're going to split prizes, that's okay um then uh but saying hey if you concede then i will give you x that's not okay formally now and that's now cheating and warrants a disqualification of the event and if you're colluding both players get disqualified so i mean yeah so so be advised you can't do that two players realize that they will both make cut this happens all the time one and two guys if you're top one and two be aware of this right um after discussing it with each other they decide to randomly determine the outcome of their game rather than play it out so at that point someone needs to just make the decision to concede that's the only way that both yep. of you won't be disqualified is someone has to just say i concede mm -hmm. you can't roll dice someone just has to say i lose and that's and that's okay you're allowed to say that i lose but if you already talk about it you say hey we're both going to make the cut and then you talk about and then you say do you just want to roll off for it you can't do that and you can't say oh do you just want to joust each other you can't do that now once you do that you're potentially at grounds for both of you getting disqualified and be advised that if if someone else at another table who is potentially not going to make the cut because both of you are there's the potential that they could be a little salty and decide, you know what? They both need to be disqualified. Because they're colluding, yeah. Because they're colluding. Essentially, and, and I know a couple people have asked before, like, why would you ever want to concede a match when your both players are going into the cut? Just to make it clear, it you sometimes you don't want to play that game because you don't want to show your strategies to that opponent who there's a good chance you will play in the cut. And a lot of times... That, that match usually goes one player wins one time and then the other one the other way. So right. a lot of times players don't want to play that match. So if you, if it's a big deal to you, just say, hey, we're both in. I'm conceding and right. just end it there. Don't don't cause any drama. Right. And the other side of that is, you know, you might have a long drive home and need to be at the top cut the next day. And, you know, you'd rather be home at 1030 than midnight. Yeah. Because you decided. Don't that... let pride get in the way for, for something that doesn't matter. Right. So, so just be, I can't wait to hear Tyler Tippett discuss this. I wasn't going to say that, Killer Aardvark, but, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, you guys, definitely tune in to the Scum and Villainy uh, podcast, and uh, I, would, uh, I would maybe uh, hear his specific thoughts about it. So uh, <laughs> He's going to have some. He's going to have some specific thoughts about it, I'm, I'm sure. So player A and player B are friends. Player A is going to advance a day two, but player needs me. Player B needs one more win to do so. After discussing it with each other, player A offers to concede so player B can advance. So this is what you were talking about, Dion. Uh -huh. Pre-discussion is really gr a gray area. Um, but if both of you guys make sure that you're looking, if you're friends, make sure that you're looking at the math, okay? And if this is something that you want to do, no one can stop you from doing it. If you're going to make Correct. the cut and your friend is is potentially close to making the cut, no one can stop you from conceding. Don't yep. talk about it and with them. Which what you have to be careful with, you know, if we're just kind of discussing one of these things, if 
if you notice that your friend is not going to make the cut and you are and you make a decision, great. But as if you do something even along the lines of, hey, what's your record? That could be – that is – I think if we're looking at these rules, you're asking for information to make a decision on conceding. Right. And I think this can apply to also different games too potentially. If uh, if you're dev- if you're six and zero, right, and your other friend is four and two, and he's and he wins his game, and and you s- and he walks up to you and you say, "Oh, how do you do, man?" And he says, oh, "I won, but barely. It's gonna MOV is gonna be super super close." And you decide that you're gonna tank your game just so that uh, just so that, or you know, you change your gameplay in order to maximize the ability for your friend to make the cut. By manipulating MOV, that's hard to prove, for sure. Yeah. But definitely something that you need to be be aware of. Um. Anyway, but yes, we can talk about this till the cows come home because there's because in X Wing colluding or um, collusion and uh, bribery is really really hard to prove, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Especially with slow play. So, you know, stalling. We talked about stalling and slow play. So stalling is intentionally doing it. Slow play is unintentional. Um, so don't do it. Um, and then aggressive behavior. Okay, guys, aggressive behavior is not something I see in X-wing um, often. There are times where I have seen cases of potential aggressive behavior that I think is probably. Like warranted, but feels unfair. Um, I'm thinking about like when uh, um, uh, the uh, worlds uh, three or three years ago, worlds two years ago, where um, what's his name cheated, and then he played, uh, and then he played Nathan the round after, and Nand was playing the bodyguard. That's probably not mm-hmm. okay now. You probably can't no, do that. That's probably <laughs> uh, that's probably something that you need to. Uh, that you know you need to you need to just let the judges handle it okay so so don't be violent towards people if you feel like if you feel like someone is getting out of hand go find a judge go talk to them let them deal with it don't deal with it yourself just let it go that's pretty much all we need typically we don't see that though no um vandalism and theft um don't steal stuff guys come on don't this, be, don't be a jerk this this hap- <laughs> and this ha- this happens guy this happens all the time and we know that things in x-wing go missing and we know that people steal other people's stuff um oh yeah aggressive behavior a person pulls a chair out from under another person causing them to fall to the ground <laughs> killer aardvark says i lulled at that i'm clearly still 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but that can hurt somebody so i understand why ffg yeah. says that um yep so vandalism and theft if someone catches you stealing something you're dq'd um honestly in x-wing if someone catches you stealing something you probably should you probably should uh apologize very profusely and pretend that it was a giant mistake or you should probably stop playing x-wing in that in that location because my Ooh, under- nobody's gonna want to be with you <laughs> nobody's gonna want to play with you anymore um, so what they're, oh, Shazbot says, so what they're saying is collude via text messages and not out in the open. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shazbot, not... stop giving up, stop giving up the, the lines of communication. Right, <laughs> right. Um, cheating, disqualification. Yeah, so don't cheat. Guys, if you cheat, you can be disqualified. The head judge is the person who uh, pretty much determines that. Um, in order to confirm, to be confirmed as cheating, two criteria must be met. First, the player must be gaining an advantage from their actions or putting someone else at a disadvantage. So you need to be getting something out of it. Second, the person must be aware of what they're doing is against the rules. Okay. So you mistakenly swapping your dials. If you get an advantage out of that and you know you're swapping your dials in order to get an advantage out of that, then you're cheating. If you if your dial spins accidentally and then that's not cheating, that's a mistake. Right. Right. So, you know, don't cheat guys. Like seriously, just don't cheat. Like 
<laughs> we shouldn't need to talk about that, this. That's easy, right? Just just don't do it. It, it, it not cheating is actually really easy. <laughs> like because mm-hmm. because cheating is is uh, they're saying cheating is intention. So yeah. so like don't intentionally which is the hardest thing to prove, right? Intent is is the hardest thing to prove, but with the um I know that in the community, we're pretty good about policing ourselves. You know, people try not to make mistakes, but with the documentation that that is available now, um, it, we'll be able to track patterns and figure out if people are actually if they are cheating or not. Yeah. So Killer Aardvark says, "I can cheat to my own detriment. This could be fun." Um, I think what I think if you cheat to your own detriment, you're probably committing a game state error and will probably receive a normal warning <laughs> from a judge. There it is. Right. And so you'll just yeah. kind of lose some, you'll kind of lose some points, but yeah, it, you won't be immediately disqualified for the event for, for intentionally doing something to your own detriment. Yep. So, um, okay. And then it gives a whole guide, a whole set of guidelines and you can yeah, just guide repeating, it, just putting right, it in a pretty right, package doing all there. So guys take some time. Um, definitely look this over. Um, this is also a good time that you guys can work with your own individual local group to figure out like what are the okay things that we can and can't do, um, especially in casual tournaments, right? Like how hard are you going to enforce these rules? Because these can be enforced literally to the letter and maybe for a lot of game groups that could be an unfun gaming experience. Mm-hmm. And what we want in X-wing is for people to play X-wing, right? These are not th- these these situa- these scenarios are not for people to uh, are not for people to gain an advantage over. These are for when you feel that you don't have any other recourse. Now we have a recourse to do something about it. At least Absolutely. that's. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a great great summary there, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is there any other things that that you uh, that you or anybody else in chat have any sort of real uh, um, real want or need um, to discuss before uh, before we kind of move on to uh, actual painting? <laughs> you know, honestly, man, I think we 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 covered most of the bases there. There's definitely more to uh, to pull out. And like I said, we're gonna try to connect some X-wing specific uh, events and things to this document here in the next couple of weeks. But I just think it's important that we have it now, and it can continue to be adjusted and grow. And um, I just want, I think, really emphasize what you said is, um, I I want the casual, relaxed nature of the X-Wing community to stay. I'm hoping that people don't use this as a weapon. And right. in a perfect world, what this document does is it keeps people who think about doing things outside of fair play from doing them and if they do they're punished right and and guys if you're going to gen con i am strongly strongly urging you don't freak out continue if if you're not cheating if you're not doing things poorly if you're not if you're not slow playing people intentionally just go to the tournament have fun and continue on as if this document doesn't exist 99% 99% of the time, I promise this document won't ever come into play for you. Like, yep. like for the most part, you can go think back to all of your X-Wing time where you're actually playing the game. And most of the time, this this doesn't even come up. This, these are the exceptions. So, so don't... The internet is a great place to have a firestorm where, where when we discuss things, like, everybody starts freaking out about all of the edge cases and all of the what-ifs that could happen... Just don't worry about it. Go to go to um, go to Gen Con. Go play in the event. Try your hardest. Have a ton of fun, and that's the most. That's all you should be thinking about. Let the judges worry about this stuff. Mm-hmm. But you should know that it exists. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, great, Luke. Uh, great work, Luke. Uh, I'm f- I'm looking forward to seeing what you could do with this uh, Naboo fighter, man. Yeah. Is there any uh, is there is there any uh, things that you want to talk about um, quickly? Um, right uh, about what's coming up for Gen Con, what we should expect next week as far as uh, as far as Gold Squadron programming. So there's no League Night next Wednesday because I will be at the FFG panel. Uh, recording, at least recording, maybe streaming, depending on what I can pull off while I'm there for the FFG panel. 
Uh, Thursday, we we got North American Championship action as well as Friday and Saturday. There won't be anything on Sunday from North American Championships. Uh, Echo Base will be live, I think, if they're back home by that Sunday night. If not, uh, we'll be back the weekend after that. We got Argentina, uh, the, the Argentina Open, followed by the Sacramento Hyperspace Trial, followed by the European Team Championships, and then the Euros FFG Premier Championship. And then we're going to do an Australian Flight Club, and then the Australian System Open, followed by the Pastimes Hyperspace Trial, and then I'm taking two weeks off. Bam, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, yep. Acorn yep, yep, says, yep. Um, um, anytime, um, anything coming up soon that you need someone to keep stats for. Acorn, I encourage you to go to our Discord. Just type in the chat, exclamation point Discord, and then uh, go in there and just post in there, say, hey, um, there's, a, there's a place that says GSP help. Just go yep. in there and say, hey, I'm available for any, uh, any stats keeping that you might need, and uh, we'll post updates and, and help you out it. So yeah, so Acorn just post in the Discord. That's really the best place to kind of organize all this stuff. Um, yep. But and the the answer to that question is yes. I will let you know. Yep. Um, so yeah. So anyway, well, thanks a ton, Dion, for uh, for jumping on for a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna kick you off now. I want to paint. Yeah, let's get painting. Uh, all right. Dion out. All right. See you later, man. Okay. Let's get uh let's get some music going. Um, let's turn off the uh, let's let's turn down the music because it would be really loud. All right, okay, guys, back to the paint cast. How you doing, guys? How's everything going? Um, tonight we are going to be uh, painting this Naboo Starfighter. Um, we're going to be painting it in non-metallic metal. What non-metallic metal is is it's the uh, way that we. Uh, <clears throat> um, it is the way that we paint without using metallics to make it look like something is shiny. Um, so um, in, in history, painters used this non-metallic metal because metallic paints were either unavailable or very expensive. Um, we see that historically with a, a couple different things. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here and kind of and kind of show you some of the uh, these paint jobs. So you see here. This is metal, right? This conquistador. I'm going to show you three conquistador photos as we, and we're going to just roll through these really quick. So you see, this is a bunch of grays, a bunch of blacks that are painted to look metallic. Okay, it looks metallic here. You can see that this is showing where light is by using grays and whites, and then showing where shadows are by using dark grays and blacks. Okay, this is the Fernando Botero self-portrait. Um, then we have a Spanish conquistador. You can see that we can get a lot more abstract, right? With this non-metallic metal. You can see that um, we're using both grays and blacks here. This is an oil painting um, where there's whites going in, right? Really dark blacks. Um, non-metallic metal is all about contrast, making something look shiny. Um, this Vasco Nunez de, de, Bo de Balboa um, picture does the same thing it's showing where light is it's showing grays to blacks to whites this is different than what we what we can see in miniature painting where we actually have metallics itself right when you don't have a metallic paint you paint with a non-metallic metal all right see you see a killer aardvark all right um so anyway we're going to paint some non-metallic metal for this guy um, the first thing that we want to do is um, get this guy primed. We want to. We're going to prime this. We're going to prime this in gray in our typical uh, Vallejo primer surface gray. And this is going to give us um, kind of a reasonable mid tone for our gray itself. Um, gray primer. I really like gray primer. Um, I like working with kind of mid tone paints anyway. So. Uh, Remember, with prime, um, you don't have to prime X-wing ships, right? But it's uh, but when you're doing non-metallic metal, you want you want to have a really good foundation. You want to have the same color running along the whole thing. Um, we're this is gonna because we took a while tonight. I wasn't expecting uh, us to take so long on our uh, discussion. 
which I thought it was a good discussion worth having. Um, worth getting it started right before our uh, our Gen Con time. I uh, think that this might take two sessions to do instead of one, right? We'll get this done. We'll get this done at next session. So remember, uh, just FYI, the model color 70997 is a perfect match for factory chrome. Well, that's good to know. Um, we're going to be, we're definitely, absolutely going to be utilizing um, on, we have two Naboo Starfighters. So the first, the first, uh, the first paint that we're going to do is a non-metallic metal. This is really just an introduction to kind of how we need to start thinking about light sources, right? We're going to start um, doing a, a segment here in the near future about light sources and how they work. Um, the light sources here are, um, we're t when we talk about them, ruined. <laughs> um, we're, we're talking about uh, how how grays and whites can, can make a, a metal look. And this is all about style, guys. You don't paint non-metallic metal because, um, because it's the easiest technique. It's not the easiest technique. It requires some blending. It requires a lot of work and a lot of forethought. What, uh, what you do is you paint non-metallic metal because you really like the effect and you like the look. Um, so this one we're gonna paint in a non-metallic metal style. The next one we're gonna paint in a true metallic metal style. So that is gonna use the same ideas about how light is hitting the ship, um, as well <clears throat> as, well as uh, pushing, um, pushing actual metallics in. So we'll use the chrome in the brightest spots, and then we'll use the black, black metal in the darkest spots. We're doing paint cast, Megasilver. Hey, welcome in, welcome in. Glad you're here though. Um, really good to see you. Uh, so just drying this off we're gonna be a a good rule of thumb is that you want to mark out places where light is gonna hit the model um, before you kind of start so you gotta we have to pick our light source right so light can light can come in from any different direction but we have but for non-metallic metal you have to pick a direction so you, we can pick the direction coming in from this way we can pick the direction coming in from this way. We can pick it coming in from the top, directly from the top. We can pick it coming in from the back. We just have to decide what would, what would look the best for this specific piece. And I think a directional light source coming in this way is probably gonna be the easiest um, for us to paint. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is just decide where your light source is coming in because that's gonna allow us to start blocking in all of our colors and everything else and that's gonna that's gonna kind of help us do all of our initial blends and kind of think about where everything's gonna be uh, what colors are we going here for we're gonna be doing traditional colors so we're gonna be starting for uh, so the front portion and the underside we're gonna be painting in um, this black and then we're gonna move to a uh, we're gonna move to a dark Prussian blue um, then we're going to move to a dark gray blue. Then we're going to move to a bold titanium white. So this is going to be kind of our progression. And we're going to be blending and using a mixture of colors for this as well. And then for our yellow, we're going to be working from a brown all the way up to, uh, to a brighter yellow. So, so yeah, um, so this is going to be just, a, so both of these are going to be really, really, um, traditional paint schemes. So we're probably not going to do anything crazy with either of them. We're just going to be showing off kind of a different technique in order to make the paint look better, right? In the same way that we uh, painted up that Anakin, if you if you recall, when we uh, just touched up Anakin to make him just look better. We're doing the same thing here. We're just repainting this to have it look um, more artistically impressive. Uh, bummer, I'll be missing part of it. Hopefully I can catch the end. This is going on to uh, YouTube here in uh, not too terribly long. This will be uh, 
this should be on YouTube. So if you miss a section of it, don't uh, don't don't fret. You can uh, you can catch the replay if you uh, if you miss a part that you're really interested in. And we're only going to be going for another uh, another half hour. So um, so again, we're we're absolutely not going to finish tonight. All that we're going to try and achieve tonight is blocking out basically where the light is going to be. We're going to start doing that with the airbrush. So the first thing that we want to do is take this coal black. Okay, we have this kind of really light gray primer. So what we want to do is start making the light go in the directions that we want to go. So we'll take this coal black and in our airbrush it goes and what we're trying to achieve, we're going to be, if we want the light to be coming from this direction, right? Coming down here like this, here, like this, like that, boom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to paint black in the opposite direction, right? We want to start building um, places where it's going to be where the light doesn't even exist. I've started priming my Power Ranger minis. Hope to get them uh, at least that done at least tonight. Got a ton of them. Awesome. That's ex that's exciting. Make sure you're posting on the Discord. Uh, Discord your progress. I'm super excited to uh, to see how that's going. Um, let's see, so I need a little bit of airbrush thinner. I need to find wherever I put that. Somewhere, it's somewhere here. Um, so what do you guys think about, uh, um, think about all these new floor rules coming out are you happy that they're here are you kind of sad do you think that they're that they're not clear unusable what what are what are your kind of thoughts as we're kind of getting this getting this primed and ready to go and kind of putting the base color in so again we're going to say that the the light is coming in from this direction so i need to swap this direction and with the airbrush we're just going to just Literally take this and just directionally paint it on here. Okay? If this side is as white as white can be, then this side needs to be black. We're gonna start, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, continue to put shading on here, but we need to start by making where all of the light and all of the shadows are gonna go. Eventually as you kind of improve and you do a lot of this non-metallic metal You'll get more of an idea of where the light kind of is going to naturally be But this is a good way to, to start this Obviously if the light is coming down here, we probably need a little bit of black up here Right we need a little bit of black On the side of this nose here But we don't want this as dark as as the other parts right like this needs to be really black because it's not getting any light at all they're good no one so no one exploits anything yeah that's good um, Naboo snow fighter well, right now it is, but it'll get color here. It'll get color here soon. Okay, so what I'm doing, so you can see now, hopefully now you can start to see what I'm kind of going for. I'm kind of going for this idea that light is coming in from a specific direction and that we got immediate shadows going on to everything. Right? So here, when you're looking at it from this from this angle, right, where the light is coming down, you can see all of the spots that are going to be exceptionally bright. And then here, you should see the opposite. You should see all the spots that are going to be exceptionally dark. And if you have some and if you have some uh, mistakes, that's okay. You can just fix them. 
And this is just an idea, right? This is just the idea of where the light is kind of going to go. This is not this is not set in stone exactly how all the light's going to go. You just need to start thinking when you're thinking about this technique and it's really hard to kind of like perfectly understand. Um you need to, it's good to just kind of start blocking in a little bit. And you can do this with a brush too. Blocking in where exactly this, uh, this color is going to go. Um, we're using a blue in our non-metallic metal because metals are typically defined by having just a little bit of blue in them. Um, using an airbrush with non-metallic metal is, is usually really a, a smart, a smart choice. It's usually a, a really good way to, uh, to get good blending. And so now that we have that black kind of locked in there, you can see, you can see now that we have light coming in at this angle, right? Which is the same as this angle all the way across, which is the same as this angle, right? This is going to get some light. That's going to get some light because of the way that it's situated. So you really want to think of a single direction that you want this light source coming in from and really, really work towards that working from multiple sources of light in uh with non-metallic metal is possible but it gets really confusing very fast and so i strongly recommend that on your first couple times that you're doing non-metallic metal that you are that you're just working on just the basics okay and if anybody has any questions about this as we move forward, I understand that it's a, a really a really complicated technique. Um, after you get this initial brush layer in, though, um, we're probably going to just immediately go right our airbrush layer in. Um, we're probably immediately going to go into brushing, and I'll show you kind of how I'm going to do this on the uh, on the wet palette here. Take 30, have half an hour. We might be able to get it kind of like the basics blocked in. Okay. So this is so I'm gonna make a progression, a progression layer. Okay. So this is gonna be our coal black. And then this is dark Prussian blue. Man, I missed the rules. Um, it's okay. We're gonna. It's gonna be on YouTube in a little bit, so uh, don't don't stress out too much. Then we're gonna use dark gray blue. Um, actually, let's let's swap that out. Let's. Uh, I like the Pro Acryl maybe a little better than I like the Vallejo. So let's use the dark warm gray. Then we're just going to go to our fourth color, which is bold titanium white. Up, oh, up, oh, gotta. I think my camera is on auto, auto focus, which is not by any stretch of the imagination what we want. Boom, there we go. Okay. So then we'll go to white here. Boom. All right. Oh, 
Okay, so now that we have these four colors, we're gonna kind of start thinking about how exactly these colors are gonna interact with each other. So obviously the black is gonna go in the darkest, deepest, darkest recesses where there is no light. We kind of already have that blocked out over here, right? So if you were just to take your brush, you can just make lines where you know that this is gonna be, right? Just make some black, right? Where you know that that's gonna be black. Then you're gonna take your, your dark Prussian blue. And this is kind of a misnomer because the dark Prussian blue is gonna be a very mixed element. It's not gonna be particularly part of all of the, uh, it's gonna be part of all of the colors, not just a color unto itself. Um, so we're just gonna kind of mark where the dark Prussian blue is. And this is just where we're gonna start blending and where we're gonna make this a little bit lighter, okay? And this is, and you definitely don't have to do this step. If you're really comfortable with, uh, with your blending and where all your light sources are, then don't worry about, uh, about necessarily adding in all of these blocked layers. This is, can be time consuming, uh, but it's really useful if you're just initially thinking about. And we're only doing silver, right? So we need to worry about just the silver parts. I forgot that this is all yellow. So we're gonna the yellow is gonna be a completely different non-metallic metal color non-metallic metal color. It's gonna be a yellow. So we'll use a different progression for that. Um, so then we have probably some blue like right here where the light is. And probably some blue like right here. And you can see I'm just kind of like I'm just kind of guessing. In a lot of ways I'm just I'm just making educated guesses about where I think the light's gonna go. And I can be wrong, and that's okay. Okay, then we take the gray. And remember, we're still just blocking this out. The gray is gonna go right here. And right here. The gray is gonna go Probably probably a lot in here. Probably gonna have a lot of a lot of gray in here. It's gonna go right here. This is gonna be gray. This is gonna be gray. Okay. And then Gray is going to go here. Okay. I'm going to go back to our blue and I'm going to put a little bit of blue right here. And I'm also going to put a little more blue right here and right here okay because these recesses are going to be pretty dark but all i'm doing is just kind of blocking out where i think the color is probably going to go and then we'll start working on blending okay and then finally i'm going to get to the white i'm going to mark out where my white's going to be all right and the white is literally where the brightest elements of your uh, of your metal are right this is where all of the shine is and we really only have a couple parts of where the shine is here i'm actually going to mark this for the whole model because this will matter for the yellow as well this is going to be bright that's going to be bright and then and as you get better you're going to be able to start marking this out in your head and not need to not need to go through the process of kind of figuring out where all of these uh, blends should go, right? And so now it's just a, now that we have this kind of like outline. Now it's a matter of just blending all of this together, and this is where the actual work begins. And it can take quite a while to actually do. So you can start from bright to dark or you can start from dark to bright. But regardless, you're gonna have 
a black, and take your blue and kind of mix it together. Okay, you're gonna have that color. Then you're gonna take your blue. gray mix that together and then you're gonna have your gray and your white and mix that together and if you want you can take just a dab of that blue and kind of mix it in there that can uh, kind of really that can that can help the overall thing and now instead of four colors now we have seven right and we're going to continually build onto all of these as we as we blend and layer up so if we started from the high from the brightest point we would then we could then start to block in this little section here Remember, it goes on both sides of the white, right? Um, a lot of non-metallic metal is defined by having exceptionally stark contrast. So that means white going to dark pretty quickly. Okay. Technique-wise, um, there's lots of different techniques for doing for doing this type of blending, and you can choose to do any of them that you want. It's not a there's no there's no like right or wrong way to do what we're talking about. This is a This is a literal uh like if you want this to look more abstract with how you're with how you're going about doing some of your uh your work, don't go more abstract. Think about um you know make the make the paint a lot more blocky. If you want this to look hyper realistic, you know, get those blends really smooth. There's going to be there's a lot of uh there's a lot of that. And with non-metallic metal, this is a matter of going all in on getting this technique to work or getting these uh these colors and the light to look natural. That's really important is having this light look natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another color outside of this gray. That's kind of this blue and dark blue kind of mixed together. And I'm just and I'm just going to continually be making new colors and be kind of blending colors in. And we'll move to a smaller brush here in just in just a minute as I kind of get an idea of how the uh How all these colors are going to kind of interact and how I want this uh, this this chrome to look does this kind of make sense to everybody how this uh, how this how this works um, it's pretty straightforward once you start adding in all your different colors um, it starts to make a lot more sense Shaz, uh, oh, Shazbot feels it, or he put that a long time ago, and <laughs> so, so we want to reinforce those dark. Right? Just keep as you as you go over things with paint. Make sure you continually reinforce where those light sources are. I mean this is this is basic this is these are the basics of non-metallic metal. Right? And this is where I'd stop before I ruined it. 
Oh, I mean, this is um, part of part of what what my job is here is to get you to is to get everyone to kind of push, right? Make a little uh, do things that are a little out of your comfort zone, right? You don't have to, right? If you feel uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, then don't do it. It's totally all right. Now I'm just going to use some of this, just this straight gray and kind of just blend it in just a little bit. We're going to start to, we're going to, once we get everything blocked into where we're kind of, kind of sort of happy, um, we'll start to use uh, glazes in order to fix and finish all this stuff. From this point of view, it looks really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's this is this is the the basics, right? This is the base, and then we're gonna continue on with it and kind of make it, um, make it our make it our own and really really focus in on it. So we got got this dark blue here that we're gonna kind of push in, and this won't this won't be perfectly white, right? This will be just just a little a little off a lot off blue we might get to a, a semi bright spot here this gray but we probably won't but because this is on the underside of the ship it's only getting the reflection so it might not be perfectly uh we might not get a uh, a perfect uh white stripe i think but this probably won't get any light at all over here. So you just kind of, you know, and it's okay to rethink how, even after you've painted a bunch, it's okay to continually rethink how you want all this light to look. You're not going to, uh, um, if something is wrong with, with your light source and how you're painting your light source, it will be very apparent you're gonna you're gonna say man that just doesn't look natural that just doesn't look right and you also this technique you also have to be okay with it not looking good for a period of time um, this is this is not going to look good for for some time. It's going to be okay, and you're going to be frustrated with it. And you're going to be working with it, and you're going to work on it and work on it, and then suddenly it's going to click. You're going to be like, oh, oh, okay, there it is. I'm back, back in black. Got that right, right. So since we have a light source now, let's uh, let's quickly swap over to our um, to our yellows. So we're going to be using um, so just to make this just to make it so that we kind of have a full representation of what we're doing. Quick question, have you ever done a ship kind of like steampunk or with exposed innards like wires and stuff? Um, not a whole ship. I mean, I've done ships with battle damage, but I've never done a whole ship with wires and innards. But I will put that on the list because that sounds like a really good idea. Okay. So this is, uh, this is light umber. Right? And it's a brown. Dark. Um... Um, dark yellow is brown, right? And then it becomes black. Okay, so we're just taking brown and we're just gonna kind of push it into, just like we did for uh, for um, the blue. We're doing the exact same thing. We're taking our we're taking the same light source so that it doesn't look weird. Right. 
And we're painting on this kind of mid-tone, dark mid-tone, something, right? We're going to kind of follow the same structure that we did over here. Um, then we need to find our yellow, which I think might be in the box. Yep. Okay, we have a golden yellow. A steampunk decimator? That's possible. YV66666 is great for the steampunk idea. Um, oh. A little... A little yellow on my hands. Look at that. It's gross. He's my father. Oh, that's cool. Um... Decimator. Well, we have a decimator that is on the list of things that we're working on. So, so we can. I will think about how we can do a, a steampunk decimator because that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so we have yellow now, and we're just gonna kind of push the yellow into the brighter areas. You'll see how much of a contrast there is between the yellow and the brown. And that's gonna require some, uh, some pretty expansive blending in order to make this not look terrible. That's okay. And we can do this yellow all the way up here. I'm just gonna paint. I'm just gonna paint over where we think our our white's gonna be because yellow is super bright. It'll be pretty easy to paint the white where it needs to go. And then we need to do just a little bit of yellow up here. All right. Um, and then we need to do. This is gonna be yellow. Right. We'll just paint all this yellow, and then uh, and then we'll bring the white in. I don't know if this is actually yellow. I have to. I'll have to look at the reference again. But. Oh, the silver look cool. <laughs> well, that's just black and white, man. Like, anybody can do that. I'm still gonna paint this. We're still just blocking this in. This'll uh, all make sense as we kind of continue forward. It'll slowly get better, slowly look better. And for those of you that, uh, like hopefully those of you that really like the brushwork and not using airbrushes, um, hopefully this kind of appeals to you a little bit because I just used the airbrush just to make the initial um, levels a little faster, just kind of block those in a little faster. But hopefully you can see that 90%, 99% of this is all um, just brushwork. So if you love rush work, this is a this is a really good technique for you. You can see I'm using the same exact angles as I get brighter here. So this is a yellow white mixture, and I'm just running it along, trying to get that angle in there. What we want is we want the ship to kind of look like light is coming in from one angle, right? Which I think that we're starting to get, right? Oh, on the wings. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we might go back to it. I don't know. I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the actual color is. If it's actually silver, we'll go back and redo it as a, like, as just like a straight black and white.
You're the Luke if he's the Vader. Oh, got it. That's funny. This is a, uh, this is just kind of one of those, um, if you want to practice a painting technique that requires exceptional patience, um, this is also a very good patience building technique. So the most important thing is that you get consistent blends all the way across. So now we're gonna take our brown and we're gonna kind of mix it with the black a little bit, right? So we're gonna start, so now that we got kind of those lighter tones in, now we're gonna start working on those darker tones. And we might take a, the dark burnt umber that we have and mix it in if this doesn't look right. We want to find where the where those dark recesses are and really just you know just make sure that we're being consistent with the other portions that we've already blocked in on our paint right so dark areas right next to each other should continue to be dark because even though the colors are different the light isn't different And it's okay if our levels are off just a little bit right now. That's okay. Um, we're gonna fix all that. We're still just in the, just like blocking this in stage. Oh, nice. 12:30 ish. What um what um time zone are you in, Acorn? If uh if I'm around, I'll at least give you a uh, at least uh, turn on my if I even if I'm not available, I'll at least turn on my uh, Twitch just so that you get another viewer. Got to support all of our uh got to support all of our boys here. My uh, my dad's in town right now. Um, came all the way from Montrose, Colorado, about fourteen hundred miles, and he's uh, hanging out with his uh, with his new granddaughter. He uh, won't tell you, but he's uh, he's pretty smitten with her. And he's not typically like a baby guy. So this is yellow, the yellow and the brown kind of mixed together, right? So we're Again, just kind of starting that blending process. So all the places where there's that kind of hard edge, I'm kind of breaking that down a little bit. Um, he's having a good old time. He's gonna get out of here tomorrow. There's a, a place in Fort, he's very excited. Tomorrow we're gonna go out um, after, um, I'm gonna, after uh, lunch tomorrow, after I get off uh, for work, um, we're gonna go to a, um, ice cream sandwich uh, an ice cream shop that does ice cream sandwiches but their kind of gimmick is that the ice cream sandwiches instead of having a cookie as the kind of outside like sandwich portion they use a donut which you know sounds like it's gonna kill you but it also sounds amazing sounds pretty awesome okay so now hopefully you can kind of see what we're going for here, right? Are the points of the wings supposed to be silver? Well, I painted them yellow. I'm not sure what color the, the, what color the narcells on the wings here are supposed to be. Um, where, um, the, uh, 
So if these need to be a different color, we can change that later. I just want to get color on this right now. Okay, so um, Phil Subto, that is on Main Street. Uh, Main Street in like Calhoun, it's called the Fluffy Bunny. So you should check that out at some point. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see what we're what we're going for now. Maybe this is, maybe this is starting to make sense to you a little bit more, right? We have our bright line of where the light hits. Oh, yummy bunny! Yeah, thank you, Killer Aardvark. We have the bright points of where the light hits, right? And then immediately it goes into shadow and becomes black. And then we kind of have where like the chrome is. And then it goes black again where it's dark and we have the big white line where the light hits because this is a really shiny object it's reflecting a lot of light but it's also not reflecting any light so you know this is just blocked in we're going to do a lot more blending on this to make it a really really nice piece um but hopefully hopefully you guys can see this is kind of the basics of that non-metallic metal we'll go back to our um well, we'll go back to our, our thing right here. I'll make sure I'm sharing the screen. Yep. Okay. Go back to our thing right here. So you see the same things are going on. We have this light that's coming down. We have light that's coming down. We go to a nice dark color over here where the light's not there. We have this nice gray progression, right? We have this bright spot here. Get to the edge, dark. Get to the edge, dark. Okay. It's exactly how all of these are, right? We have bright spots dark bright spots dark on this one um, we have lots of bright lines showing where the light is actually like shining off of it and then we have the really dark parts over like over on where the end of the shoulder is right here right that's showing the dark portions of uh, of the armor itself <laughs> that dude's legs are thick. That's right. So, this is the uh, so these this is kind of the the basics. These are this is the basics of non-metallic metal. And once you work on this the painting this way for a while, you'll immediately start to to like understand it in your head of how it should look, and you won't necessarily have to block it out like this in the future. I'm blocking it out like this for you um, so that you guys can see the the kind of progression of where of where the metals uh, of like kind of how light and shine and all that stuff kind of work if you're not using a metallic paint and again if you like metallic paints and you want to use metallic paints go for it um, the next Naboo Starfighter that we're going to do is going to be just like this, only it's going to, we're going to use the same exact technique. The idea that light is coming in from a specific angle and it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to use that technique um, with metallic paints, right? So everything on that is going to be metallic. And you'll see a very different, um, a different strategy of how, uh, um, or a different effect. Right, so even though we're painting in the exact same way, um, we're getting a different we're, we're getting a different outcome. Right. I'm trying to keep my palette in view because I think um, the a palette cam for this is uh, pretty is pretty important and worthwhile. It's good to it's good to see kind of how colors are how I'm mixing colors. Um, not that I'm perfect at mixing colors, right? I'm not. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just here. I'm just kind of showing you, you know, what I what I learned and what I'm kind of how I understand painting. There are much, much better painters um, than me out out and about in the world, um, especially for things like you know non-metallic metal and this type of stuff that will be able to paint something like this you know a hundred times faster than I can so I'm just using straight black now 
I'm just putting it in the darkest recesses here. And you can see that I'm using a pretty big brush. I'm just I'm just putting I'm just blocking in all of these colors. And if this is if this if you decided that this was going to be kind of like your style, you know, you can decide that your non-metallic metal is going to be a lot more kind of abstracted, right? That it's not going to be that it's going to be more like this. It's going to be look more like an oil painting than it would uh, an an acrylic perfect painting. So. Hey Midwest Scum, how you doing? Welcome in. Um, so we're gonna continue to work on these blends. It's 9:02. Um, we'll do a we'll do a little bit more. We'll finish off uh, we'll finish off all the basics here. Um, I got this uh, brown, like brown yellow color that we'll uh, kind of put into into here. Um, I did apply guys here's a here's a side note um, I don't know if it's gonna come if anything's gonna come of it but I did apply for a um, um, a sponsorship with um, the pro acryl guys monument paints um, so they have a, a sponsorship application opportunity so I applied with them and said hey you know like no paint company no one cares about x-wing so you should care because we're doing painting now and it would be fun and so hopefully they uh they get back and they see the worthwhileness in uh doing doing painting so that what that means for you guys is that i'll have uh is that they'll be able to send me actual paints and i'll be able to help you guys out on giveaways so you know Part of our giveaway package can include uh, can include paints. Um, I'm not going to buy paints for for you out of my own pocket, right? I'll do 3D prints because I uh, because I like the 3D print stuff, but I'm not going to do uh, I'm not going to not going to spend you know ten bucks of my own money, right? Not the stream's money because uh, because. Um, I don't actually see any uh, really any of that um, but if we're but if we're sponsored I'll be able to give away more stuff giving away more stuff is great all right so once we finish kind of where we're where we're happy with all of this stuff or with this coloring um, we're gonna we're gonna push into gonna take this yellow and kind of brown it down just a little bit. Um, we're gonna start making glazes, right? Remember that glazes utilize is just basically paint with a bunch with glaze medium in there, and glaze medium is just paint without pigment. Um, oh, it's somewhere over here. I can feel it. Yeah, okay. So, glaze medium. Um, I've noticed that I've noticed you poke a model the model a couple times with your finger. Are you trying to quickly correct a mistake? Um, any kind of techniques or thoughts? Um, you could add to that? Sure, sure. Um, so if you're freaking out over something, so let's say, so I took a little bit of yellow here and you get some yellow right there. If you get it quick enough, you can just wipe that. You can just, you can just hit that with your finger and just wipe that all the way away to the point where no one's realistically going to notice. Um, I also use it sometimes just to kind of like really quickly blend. Okay. So if I'm here and I have some yellow here and I just po po poke some yellow here. I can, if I want to go in this direction, I can just kind of quickly just let it dry just for a second and spread it in that direction and just droop. And you actually start to get, you can actually kind of do like limited blending. I wouldn't say you should use that as your main method of blending for anything, um, but you can get some limited blending out of uh, just utilizing your, utilizing your finger. 
Um, yeah, and, and usually I use my finger when I'm kind of freaking out when it hits when I when it hits something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is not that is not where I intended that paint to go. I'll just kind of like take my finger and just kind of oh, nope, just kind of wipe it off. That's usually what I use my finger for. But good question, really, uh, really interesting. Sometimes I don't even realize that I'm doing some of this stuff. I'm just kind of it's just kind of habit, um, and I'm not sure that that's an approved like technique that people would would say is great oh fell subto gifted you a sub thank you so much fell subto that's awesome i really appreciate it you're awesome um this looks so cool um Oh, Shazbot, does that mean that you can only use their paints on stream? No, but it means that we'll we'll use their paints as a preferentially on stream, which honestly I'm probably going to do anyway. I really enjoy their paints, and I'm really liking them more and more and more. So we're probably going to wind up doing that anyway. Um, when the Nebu Starfighter is in flight, it has that blue glow. Are you going to add that? Absolutely, we're going to add that. However, that's going to come at the end. Uh, Midwest Scum, sorry I only caught the end of the stream. Thank you for the feedback on Discord. You're awesome, man, um, and you're doing a great job. All of you guys on Discord. If you're painting, right? I mean, all everybody, everybody who's on the stream right now or later on in the future listening on the, U on the YouTubes, um, you guys should join our Discord server. Um, it'll be in a link in the description below, um, or in uh, if you're watching live, just hit exclamation point Discord. What a uh, what the Discord is is this um, one. It's a place where you can talk about X Wing, right? And if you like X Wing and you enjoy that, um, there are lots of people who also very much enjoy talking about X Wing all the time for forever for hours on end they'll talk about it you they, we have sections on i want to build a republic list what's the best way to do that i want to build a, an empire list there's a whole section on that um but we also have a very thriving paint community where we're where we um people post their their work that they've been doing whether it's x-wing or not right not everyone paints x-wing all the time um, so they post their ex or they post their uh, they post their pictures. Um, they get some feedback. They also get some accountability, right? I mean, if people are if people are if you know that other people are watching your work, then you tend to try a little bit harder when you paint. And um, whether you know it or not, that does mean something. That it works. It really does work and make you a better painter. So we haven't gone into glazes yet. I'm still just kind of figuring out where exactly I want all this light, right? I'm thinking about all these basics. Yeah, and anybody who's not on Discord should come join. Um, it's been my experience that every single person who consistently point, uh, posts on our Discord is getting better at painting. Not because they're good, and not because like I am some amazing, amazing painter who's giving amazing feedback. I would say that half the time I look at the paints and I forget to to give any substantial commenting back, you know, and that's on me. And I'm trying to get better at it, but for the most part, it's just because, you know, other people are giving good feedback. They're saying, oh man, you should use this color. Or people are looking at other people's paint jobs and saying, oh, I really like that. And then trying to emulate that and work with that. And so it's really just, it's so fantastic. I'm, I like our community that, that we're building is just, uh, is, it's just phenomenal. So good. Right, so I'm kind of like, I think with the yellow, I don't want as hard of a of a of a light source, right? I want this to be, I want this to be a lot more of a yellow ship than a brown ship. So, 
with that, I'm just taking more yellow and just kind of expanding the light a little bit. And this is this is tone, right? This is your color tone. So even though we have a single light source, we can control the tone and the rate that our tone is actually getting uh, getting applied. And so you can see, all right, so one thing that you can see right now is that this right up here is a lot brighter than this right up here, even though they have the same light source and the same angle. So we want to brighten this up just a little bit, and we want to brighten this up just a little bit so that because I think that this looks more natural than this. So I'm just going to start, I'm, all we're doing is we're going to start pushing in some of those, uh, some of those colors. Right? And then we'll get to the point where we're doing fine blending. And that, that fine blending is, uh, um, is really, is really going to be, for this, going to be pretty key. Because I want, I want this stuff to look just... Because we're giving this away for prize support, I want this to look just. And this is not a technique you see very often in X-Wing. I want pe I want anybody who gets this ship to go. Oh man, this is amazing, All right? I may or may not also be practicing for my own ships, All right? Um. Also note that this is a good technique. So if you liked the uh, like Borderland style. The Borderland style paint won't look great on the Naboo Starfighter because it's just so smooth and curved and it has such great lines, right? Whereas it looks great on the uh, on the Torrent because the Torrent is really hard edged. So, um, so just keep in mind that different paint styles might work better on on different ships. And you don't have to stick to you don't have to stick to a single a single way of painting your squad um, when you're painting them just just in order to keep uniformity. You can keep uniformity um, by just uh, by just continuing to um, paint all your stuff as you right. I promise that I can I can show I know what all of my uh, what my ships look like right if I have a ship that I painted um, and I'm walking by it usually I'll recognize it just because of the nature that I painted it right and I know and eventually and, and as you become more prolific of a painter you'll start to understand that that you'll see You'll see your paints, and you'll just understand that something's been painted by you, right? That it's a style thing more than it's a uh, a, uni a uniformity thing. So you can have arc, or you can have torrents painted in a Borderland style, and um, a Nabu Starfighter painted in a non-metallic metal, and have them all look similar enough that they work really well in a squad together. that up for whatever reason I thought that it should have been a little more brown but it certainly should not be now that I'm looking at it and that's okay just just keep going um, one thing about this ship as we're doing this note that it's very linear right that as we switch colors even though we're switching colors we're keeping the tones the same so we have this bright white line all the way down because that's the brightest part and then we're keeping the tones all the way the same and we're keeping the progression of colors consistent all the way across the model. Um, really very, very important to keep in mind when you're doing this technique. And hopefully you guys see, see the value in this. See, that, see um, how this could be a, uh, a pretty useful technique for X-Wing. 
Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a really bad technique um, because you're because what you can run into with non-metallic metal is that things won't look right from every angle, right? Um, here, for instance, let me grab this model really quick. So, so this guy is painted in a non-metallic metal. You can see that he has, you know, light source here, and as you spin him around. But when you look at him from kind of a top-down angle, he looks really funky, right? Ugh. But, <clears throat> So anyway, I think we got a good, um, I think we got a good block in on this, and hopefully this will be a good thing that you guys can practice as we uh, continue on into next week. So on Monday we're gonna come back to this guy and we're gonna finish him all the way off. Um, it's gonna be probably a considerable amount of work. We're gonna be working mostly with glazes, working back and forth in different colors, and uh, getting a really smooth coat on everything. Um, so, okay, so, um, Zombie Flash had a question. Um, I brought up the steampunk thing earlier, so like how the Y-Wing is. It has a cover, it has its cover version and then the normal one without the cover. Would that be manageable to do with the Naboo? Um, I think so, but it's gonna require a little bit of, um, uh, manipulation, right? You're gonna have to actually, um, use maybe green stuff or do something like that. Um, in order to get the undercarriage of the Naboo Starfighter to look like it has gears and stuff. Um, I, I, feel, I feel like it would be a really cool project, but it's going to be a lot of work. Um, just because the Starfighter is still really small. Everything in the Republic feels really, really small. Um, so I would start, so that's why I was like, oh yeah, the Decimator. Because I've never done that before, so I want a really, really big thing to work on a dec to work for the decimator, right? And so I can take big chunks and you know, 3D print some clockworks, get that in there, so that like take out pieces of the decimator, put 3D chunks of the clockwork in there, and have it inset correctly in big fashion, so I don't have to worry about like little, little tiny things on the Naboo Starfighter. That's all. Um, Acorn 4, don't leave us. Oh, well, I got to. Um, I do have family in town, so even though we're, uh, even though we are having kind of, we had kind of a weird start to our paint cast, um, we do have to end on time tonight. So, you guys are awesome, though. Um, do all the things, all the likes and the subscribes and all that if you want to. Um, uh, make sure you're back here on Monday while we finish this off. Um, and then we're gonna move into Gen Con stuff. So I don't know if next Thursday we're going to have a paint cast because of random Gen Con festivities, right? Um, if Dion is streaming, right, like game stuff comes first. So um, so definitely on Monday, maybe not on Thursday. If we have the availability on Thursday, we'll definitely do a paint cast um, because I will not be at Gen Con this year. So you guys are awesome. Um, wish you all the best. Make sure you're signed up on the Discord. Come out and show off your paintwork and uh, hang out with us some more. Um, all right, guys. Um, I'm out of here. So uh, with that, I'm Luke and Gold Squadron out.